a lot has happened recently. So I now have the soil, I have some of the rocks, I have the space after moving the playground further back. So now I just have to think about the plants. It feels like it's been a while since I did any work on any of the plants, so it's about time we get back to them. It's still a bit warm with summer still not officially over, but I think it's safe to say that I can move a few plants here and there. So let's get right to it. I'm off to do a bunch of things with my plants, not to mention replanting them, maybe removing some of them, shifting, transferring, all sorts of things. So let me walk you through them one by one. First up would be the Violet Queens. I have been neglecting them for a while but I was supposed to complete this arc. I've been meaning to do this for quite a while now but I never found the time to do it so now is the perfect time. Having done that, I need to remove the Imbricata and some of the larger Freely Echeverias out in Project Lux because they're starting to crowd and they're pushing against each other. So making enough space would be necessary for them to survive this winter without having any rot because as they are getting more crowded, the airflow is going to be much less and it's really humid when it's winter. So. This is something I have to do for their sake. Just now, I chopped off the tip of this flower stalk because it was having lots of mini bugs. And I think they should be doing the same for all of the chopsticks. As you can see, this is the old dark. And on this side, there's a bare spot. This, this is because I pulled out an imbricata because it was starting to rot. And I think I should start doing the same for the others because it's starting to get crowded here. They're getting, they're growing too big and they're occupying the whole space. The problem with that is they're getting too big that they're preventing much airflow from going around, especially for the Echeverus at the back. So what I'm thinking of doing is to remove all of the imbricatas along this line maybe transfer them somewhere else that way the bigger ones at the back will have some breathing room this one right here is one of the imbricatas with less chlorophyll so as you can see it's paler than the other ones and because of that it stresses more easily compared to the others so right now it's more pink orange 
compared to this one. There is a few of them here. This is just one of them. So I'm planning to propagate more of these and maybe less of these because I have too much of the regular ones. So I'll keep this one and I'm I'm going to think about what I'm going to do with this. Maybe sell them off or place them in other parts of the garden. We'll see. As you can see, I have them grouped into two groups. On this group, these are the regular types, which has, which has, which is typically darker and has more chlorophyll. And on the other side, these are the types that are more pale and they get more stressed easily. So as you can see, comparatively, these ones are more colored up compared to these ones. So as I've been saying, I want to make more of these and maybe get rid of some of these. Awesome. My freelies and caranculated echeverias are now getting so big that they're almost touching each other. Well, actually, some of them are touching each other. I might have to remove some of them and replace with smaller cultivars. And as for these big ones, I might, I might just use them in my new landscape. I don't know. Now, speaking of new landscape, we've started cleaning up. So as you can see, we've got all of this space. There are still a few plants in this section. And these are actually eggplants. We're just waiting for some of the flowers to turn into fruits. We might relocate them. I don't know. Removing all those imbricata has left a few gaps around the arc. But I still should have more of these Tuscan rocks. So yes, I'll just work on covering up, filling up the gaps. And then I can move on to the next part. <laughs> nice. Push the truck, Zach. Push it, push. Thank you. Thank you. Unload, Zach. Unload. Put it down. Thank you. Good job. More, more, more. All of them, all of them. Thank you for unloading, Zaki. You're looking at my Echeveria fire and ice and as you can see it has a bunch of flower stalks growing. One of them is really is quite long already and I feel like I should cut this one now. The reason being is that this is already flopping around in the wind and it's too top heavy and I've got lots of Australian honey eater birds that come around and just you know uh, eat or pick the honey from the flowers and this is going to flower soon the problem with that is as you can see it it has already fallen over and it's dragging the plant down together with it so if you have a look if I just move this around the rosette moves as well so you can tell that it's really heavy what I'm going to do is to chop off this flower stalk and I don't know, put it, stick it in a pot somewhere. Look, it's dragging the whole rosette down. It looks like it has already fallen over. So, let's deal with the flower stalk first before thinking about what we'll do with the main rosette. It 
seems like the bottom is traumatized so I might have to chop this down and now that I think about it if I pull this up I might as well work on the others because right now they are crowding the whole place because they are getting too big I would really like to move this tutti frutti out maybe move it outside but it might also be a good idea if I plant something smaller in there so it has the chance to grow big well this one has already outgrown this area so I might be wait yeah you know what maybe I should move I should move the large freelies out and use them in the new landscape so I guess this means that this ones are graduates of the of project locks and they shall be moving on to bigger and better things fire and ice you're first to go Not sure if you can see this but it's already leaning forward and it has actually fallen over already so I'll just pull it out I'm also thinking of removing this two other freelies this is an Echeveria Dix Pink and that's an Echeveria Tutti Frutti I'm happy with this Echeveria bumps at the moment, it has enough space around it, so I'm thinking that maybe I could move the Etna forwards somewhere over here, and I'll leave that pompous alone I guess, so maybe just stagger them a bit, that way rather than having them in, in perfect rows, by having them staggered diagonally, they would have enough space in the gaps between them, so that means I might put something small over here. In keeping with the theme of having the red bits, red echeverias flowing this way, I might add a red echeveria in that hole to fill up that hole. And for that I'm looking at this painted frills, also known as red prints, and I think that would be a perfect replacement for the tutti frutti. So to help visualize, I'm just going to lay this here. I'm thinking that they should go somewhere in this spot, so I might be moving this hole here. So this little painted frills will be in this spot. This Echeveria pompus will stay right here. The Etna will be moved forwards. That way it doesn't crowd with the Zorro because the Zorro can go quite big. And lastly, this bumps. Echeveria bumps, this will be staying right here. I think that's a solid plan.
So I finally decongested project locks. I've removed most of the larger echeverias because they are starting to crowd the place. And now that the remaining plants have breathing room, I think this time next year they would be much larger than they are now. And as for the new area, I've started moving plants out as you have seen just now. This is not yet the design that I had in mind. I have, I have yet to clear out the rest of the area and what I want to do before I start working here is to lay out the rocks according to the arrangement that I want. In fact, I, may, I might add a few more or maybe not, it depends. I'll also be doing a little bit of inventory of my plants so I'll, I'll see what else I could be harvesting around. I'd also have to check which pops are growing now. I'll also have to check which ground cover is now ready for harvest because I would need to cover lots of area as you can imagine. Huge thanks to my supporters at Patreon. Your support means so much to me. And I'd like to give a special mention to Oscarino, Julie Seal, and Snap Cooey. You're awesome guys. If you'd like to help me make more videos, you could hop over to patreon.com slash seriscapades and pledge any amount that you're comfortable with. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel because there would be lots more content along this vein. So as you can see, I'm just starting with a new area and there would be lots more to do. Oh yeah, it's not much, which means that it's officially the start of autumn down in the southern hemisphere. And this means that I'll be having lots more autumn theme content coming your way. The first of which would of course be, and this is something I've been talking a lot recently, it's tearing down my shade cloth. Man, they're so restrictive. It's so hard walking around with them in the way. And they also make it hard to film properly because you have to dodge them, you have to crouch, you know. Apart from that, I'll also be focusing on some of my summer dormant plants and if you know it, it's the Aeoniums. They are coming out of dormancy soon. It's still a bit warm, but according to forecasts, we still have a hot day coming up this weekend and I think that's the last one for the, over the next few, at least according to the 14 day forecast. That's the only 30 degree plus Celsius day that's left. I'm pretty hopeful that after then, it would be cooling down. Stay tuned, keep watching Sariscapades, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.